the first, the first the speaker today afternoon is Pavel Kastrat, who will speak about Michelsi construction and quantum graphs. Please, the floor is yours. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. Everybody. I can see a few of you, I guess. The first rows are empty somehow. Yeah, but let, let me explain, Pavel. That's because uh, if we sit in the front rows, we have to bend our necks at the very okay. end. Yeah. Okay. So there are many yeah, more at your top that you can see. I, I've been to this room uh, on, on September last year. I more or less remember the, the conditions. Okay, so here is my talk. I think that Arek um, Bochniak is present online. So hi, Arek. Hi, everybody. Uh, so this is this is uh, a joint work with Arek Bochniak from Max Planck Institute. Now he was a PhD student of uh, Andrzej Sikas, and at some point we started to work together. Firstly, with Piotr Sultan, who maybe is there. He is here, yes. And then, then together with Arek, we, we started to work, work uh, on this project, Michelski Construction for Quantum Graphs. graphs. Can you see Piotr now? Yes, yes, I can see in the, in the shorts. Uh, <laughs> I have shorts as well. You cannot see it, but I do have well, We them. cannot even see your face because it's very dark. Ah, you cannot see my face? No. I mean, now we can see your face. Yeah. Now I believe it's you. Okay. It's me and this is yeah. my shorts. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, this is uh, a talk about quantum graphs. I and uh, and, and this is um, so the concept of quantum graphs will, will be introduced later. I will not, I will be talking about graphs, I will be talking about algebras, but there will be no, no graph algebras in my talk, unfortunately. Uh, uh, so let me first uh, say a few words about the uh, what is Michelski construction for graphs. The plan is to explain first this construction for graphs then i will move on to quantum graphs and uh, i will state a few theorems and then maybe i will prove one at the end depending on uh, of the time constraints actually how much time do i have one hour one hour i can speak one hour with questions and, and all that okay so uh, first of all uh, definition of uh, what is the, what is Michelski construction for graphs let me explain this first so given a graph uh, so given a graph g so for you graph is directed graph as we understand it undirected graph for me undirected it's an undirected graph which is uh, uh, a pair of vertices and edges so V corresponds to vertices of G, and it will be often denoted by V of G, because we will uh, we will uh, deal with many graphs at, at the same time. So this notation will take care of that. Uh, the edges of G will also be denoted by E of G. And given a quantum, given a graph, undirected graph, this is undirected. Uh, we construct a new graph. Uh, called Michelskian of G, strange name, but this is terminology which is used, Michelskian of G, denoted, denoted by mu of G. This is a new graph. So mu of G has its own set of vertices and the set of edges. 
and it's, it's an ad, kind of ad hoc construction when you see it first, but later on I will give you the motivation why this construction was invented by Michelski. What was the reason for this construction? So the, 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 the set of vertices is, it consists of two copies of uh, V, and a singleton and uh, in order to distinguish between these two copies of g so assuming that the number of the number of edges of g is n it's, it will be always finite in the stock we shall use the following notation which distinguishes between these two copies of G of, of, of vertices of G, namely uh, the first copy, the, the vertices of in this copy here would be denoted by U, U1 up to UN. And the second copy of the set of vertices will be denoted by V1 up to Vn. So if the number of vertices of, of G is n, then the number of vertices of mu of G is 2n plus 1. So let me write it here. The number of vertices of mu of G, here I forgot to, to, wrote, to write. V of G, it's doubled and there is the singleton present in the Michel scan of G. Now, what is the set of edges? Uh, the set of edges of mu of G. So we have edges as in G. So whenever u and ui and uj are connected by an edge in g, it is still connected by the by the edge in mu of g. So this is mm, an edge in 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 sorry. Moreover, every uh, every vi is connected to the singleton, so we have a, an edge for we have an edge between a singleton and the second copy of 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 G. And finally, given an edge between UI and UJ, we add an edge between UI and the corresponding VJ in the second copy. So given an edge in the original, in original graph, we add, we add the, the edge between UI and U, UI and VJ. I think I should correct it. UI is linked to VJ. So uh, an example would be helpful. So let me give the simplest possible example, namely start starting with G, which is complete graph, complete graph with two vertices. What is uh, Michelski Michelskian for mu of G? From so mu of g now have five vertices, five vertices, because this one has two vertices. Uh, so how do you how do you picture 
this new graph. So you have the you have singleton and two copies of the complete compli graph with two vertices. And uh, there is this edge present in K2. Now, um, oh, let me rather, it's easier to draw it uh, a, li a bit differently. Namely, let me draw this singleton on the left, on the right, sorry. So the singleton is uh, linked to the second copy of, of K2. And uh, this is U1, this is U2, this is V1, this is V2. And now we, since U1 is linked to U2, V2 is linked to U1. And similarly, V1 is linked to U2. And this is the graph, which is the same as the following graph. So Michel scan of K2 is this graph here. Okay. So why this ad hoc uh, construction is interesting? It allowed for a construction of, uh, uh, of a graph with large chromatic numbers, lab number, and no triangles inside. So you, if you think for a while, if there are no triangles in, in the graph, then you can wrongly guess that chromatic number of this graph is, should, shouldn't be that, that large, which is not the case. And Michelski construction um, provided a way of getting a graph with large number, a large chromatic number and a small click number, which, is, which means that click number is just the smallest possible, which is two which uh, um, reflects the fact that, 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 that there are no triangles inside this graph. So let me introduce chromatic number and click number. Number and click number. Of a graph. So, in order to, to introduce these numbers, the note uh, by Kn this is complete graph of n vertices. Just in the previous example, we have K2, the complete graph with two vertices. Uh, K4, for instance, complete. And when you say complete, you mean that there is an edge between every pair of vertices? Exactly, exactly, exactly. This is what the. And do you allow multi edges or between? No, no. We, we only allow one edge, one okay, edge between okay, two. Okay. Complete graph with n vertices. So for for example, K four is. This thing here, uh, and what what is uh, a click number? So first of all, click number. Of a graph G. It is denoted by Omega of G. And omega of G is the largest 
<clears throat> complete graph embedded into, into this given graph G. So omega of G is bigger than N if uh, Kn can be embedded into G. And similarly, you define chromatic number. So this number, this invariant of G of, of a graph is denoted by chi of G. And now chi of G is smaller than N if G can be homomorphically mapped to Kn, if there exists a homomorphism from G to Kn. And chromatic number is uh, related to coloring of the graph. Uh, chromatic number is the smallest possible uh, number of colors which can which must be used for coloring properly the graph and we say that you color properly the graph if the edges which are linked by the if the vertices which are linked by the edge have different colors uh, so sorry shouldn't be this uh, map from g to k n subjective yeah it's automatically uh, Oh yeah. yeah, you let me add it here. I okay. have to think for a while, but I don't think it's necessary, necessarily because I have inequality here. It's the smallest possible you can, but I'm not sure <laughs> it's just a minor issue. So I can add subjectivity just to be on the safe side. Uh, and now that he, the, the motivation for Michelski is this theorem. Motivation for Michelski construction is this theorem here. How do I understand why you call chromatic number chromatic number? Can you explain why you call a click number a click number? Uh, click number because so click number is the largest possible click in the graph. Click is the group of vertices which are uh, mutual, mutually linked. They okay. they form a, a clique. I don't know whether there's yeah, a comment. Yeah, 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 yeah. A small uh, group of people who do not readily allow others to join them. That's the definition. Uh, of clique. Yes. And it's clicker yes. in Polish. It's clicker in Polish. I guess your definition is correct. I might have what I what the definition which I gave is the the biggest group of people which are mutually linked with each other they have their uh, phone numbers <laughs> if the phone number uh, having a phone number is the the edge relation in the That's among the people okay. okay so but you know this is directed relation because i might have your phone number. yeah 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 i i, I i'm aware of that yeah uh, so the theorem of michelski is uh, mm, it describes the, de the behavior of these numbers for, for his, his construction, namely the click number of Michelskian of G is, stays the same. It is not enlarged by in this construction, but uh, the chromatic number of uh, Sorry, chromatic number. Chromatic number of mu of g is um, you add one to the, to the chromatic number of g, and in particular by this theorem, if if you start your construction with the with k two, you can produce our k two has chromatic number two and to click number two. And to, if you apply successive, successively um, uh, this construction to K2, you get a graph which has arbitrary large chromatic number, but no triangles inside. Um, let me let me state it. 
for every for every and bigger than one, there exists a graph G with no triangles. So click number is two and chromatic number of G is arbitrary, arbitrary, arbitrary large. And there was a problem in, in I guess in the 50s, whether you can achieve, if you can find such a, such a uh, graph like without, so this is, this means that there are, that there are no triangles. G. And now what we did with Arek Ochniak, we started to, we, we proposed a quantum version of, of Michelski construction. Namely, we proposed the, the, the construction which is applied to quantum graph. You start with a quantum graph. So next section of this talk is quantum graphs. and Michelski construction. Actually, I forgot one, one comment. Maybe first I will, I will add one more message to, to this story, one more section to this story. Namely, uh, given a graph G, you assign with this graph, it's a adjacency matrix. So A is a matrix n by n matrix with when n is the number of vertices of G and you, you write a matrix which reflects the edge relation. So since we have, we are dealing with undirected graphs, our matrices are symmetric and uh, it has in, in the eighth jade uh, place, it has one if and only if uh, there is a vertex between i there is an edge between i vertex and j vertex so for instance for i think you quite have it well this is very standard concept so i will not give you an example but uh, matrix i will only write how, what is the relation between a G and a mu of G. So if a G is an N by N matrix, then this is two N plus one by two N plus one matrix. And uh, it has the following uh, structure. So a mu of G and the matrices are uh, symmetric, of course. Ma matrices are symmetric be symmetric because we are uh, interested in undirected graphs. So what do you have uh, in those nine places? Uh, since uh, we just keep um, edges from a G uh, in a mu of G, we write here a uh, we write here a G. Uh, moreover, there are no loops. There are no edges between within the second copy of of V of G. So there is zero here zero, which is n by n matrix. So since uh, edges of the second copy and the first copy are just kind of repeated, then you, you repeat here A of G. And uh, since every, the singleton is linked to the, to the, to every vertex of the second copy of, of G, you write here uh, and vector of ones transposed vector of ones transposed without transposition here and 
here are zero vectors. So this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector of zeros, this is a vector of zeros transposed. And that, that is the um, adjacency adjacent, matrix of um, Machewski and of G if the, if the adjacency matrix of G is denoted by AG. Okay, so now, as I mentioned, I will, I will move on to quantum graphs. And perhaps, uh, okay, still I have 35 minutes. So quantum graph Michelski construction. How do you what how the construction is performed when you deal with quantum graph? So what is a quantum graph first definition? So a quantum graph. Oops. Quantum graph is a triple in, in this case, consisting of a quantum space with uh, uh, a fixed delta form. I will tell you right away what is the delta form and an operator A, which is a counterpart of the adjacency matrix. So G is a finite quantum space, finite quantum space, which means that C of G is a direct sum of finite matrix algebras of matrix algebras from A to some number D. Psi is a delta form. So delta is just a number. Uh, psi Psi, a delta form is a, a state, a faithful state on C of G. So faithful state. Satisfying some an extra condition. Uh, if you ask me what is the role of the of this condition, I, I'm not that sure. It's a state which is the closest to uniform distribution on this quantum space. There is this heuristic behind that. But uh, how to explain this heuristic? Probably if you look at examples of delta form, then you can see that. If you need this to, to see an example, I can give you and just uh, this is uh, the delta forms on finite quantum space are classified. We know how they look. Uh, what is a delta form? And this is a state which we have an ex which satisfies an extra condition, namely, uh, given a state, you can form GNS, GNS space for this state. Uh, L2 of G, which I will denote just by L2 of, mm, of the quantum graph G. This is GNS space. And given, since uh, C of G is a, mm, um, well, since uh, psi is faithful, then as a vector space, this is nothing but C of G, but you have a scalar product given by psi with the scalar product. In particular, you have a map, which is multiplication map from L2 of G, tensor L2 of G, to L2 of G, and a very nice, uh, survey on quantum graphs was recently written by Matthew Dawes, and I refer to this paper to, to for more details. Uh, so this is a multiplication map.
and we say that psi is a delta form if and only if uh, multiplication map is a partial isometry up to delta number. Up to delta square. So delta is a positive number. If delta is one, then it means that M is a partial isometry. And to, I, I don't know whether I should give you uh, the, the general form of delta form on L2 of G. If you need to see an example, I can give you. But for the moment, it's not that important to have a, a specific formula for that. What should be remembered that a delta form is something which is not that far. In case of classical space, it's exactly uniformly distributed uh, probability measure on, on your space. In case of quantum space, it's something, it is something which is similar to that. And how do you get with multiplication? What's the formula? Multiplication is just the multiplication on C of G. So uh, L, okay. L2 of G is not as a vector space, it's just a C of G. Uh, with a scalar product because uh, our state is faithful. Fine, yeah. So it's just a matter of new, new notation for the, 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 the old thing for, for our algebra, but we equip it with a with, uh, scalar product. In particular, you have an adjoint. Uh, yes, it's finite dimension. Yeah. Okay, so this is the second part of uh, our triple, second ingredient. Now, the third one. The third one plays the role of adjacency matrix. So A is uh, a Hermitian operator on L2 of G, such that A star is A. And now, classically, we should have this matrix to have only zeros and ones. Uh, um, Sorry, Pavel, I, I'm still a bit confused about this formula. So I understand everything except for the last symbol. It's delta L to G. What do you mean by this? Delta ID, this is. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, no. Sorry. ID. <laughs> so, ID, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm good. So this means that uh, if you divide M by delta, you get partial isometry. Yeah. M star is an isometry. This is the meaning of that. So M star by delta is isometry. And now the last ingredient of, of the concept of quantum graph is this self-adjoint operator A. And uh, in order to, to refer to, to classical case, we need an extra condition on, on A, namely, if you perform the student product of, of A with itself, then you then A should not be. So I, I'm, I hope you know what is a student product of two matrices. You just multiply the, ele the matrix elements of them in the wrong way, not like matrices should be multiplied. And uh, the, con the last condition, uh, if you go to quantum case, then the corresponding condition is the following one. Uh, if you compose it with M, M and, and M star, then you should get delta squared times A. And in order to, usually you add some more conditions which refer to undirectedness, no loops inside, but for a moment, let me not write more conditions because uh, they are not that instructive when you see them for the first time. This is this condition refers to to the classical property of adjacency matrix that the uh, matrix elements of, of A are consists of zeros and ones. Oh, I don't understand so, this formula. So M star is a map from A to A tensor A. So how do you compare it? Do you want to apply M star to A and? No, M star is a map from L2. Oh, okay, fine. L2 of G times L2 of G. 
A. An A. a okay. Okay. Thanks. Yes. yes. It all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Okay. I think I will speed up a little bit and uh, just mm, because I would like to leave you some time for questions and in, if I. You have just, 15 minutes for questions after this hour. Ah. Okay. So let me be uh, not that quick. Not, not hurry up and uh, continue with this <laughs> slow way of presenting all and detail. May I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, about this student um, product of algebra, does it mean that entries of this matrix uh, are zeros and ones? Zeros and ones. Yeah, because nothing more. Nothing more. Okay. So entries satisfy. Z, Z square equals Z. If Z is the entry of A, then Z square is Z. So Z is either zero or one. Uh, you have self-adjointness, so you have symmetry. And you require, there are no ones on the diagonal, which can be also written in a similar way, but I will not show you how exactly. I don't remember now, uh, but it's, in the in the standard uh, definitions of a quantum graph, you have you have one more condition, which uh, excludes the the loops in your graph. Okay, so now uh, you you assign to, to a given quantum graph. So we have this quantum graph G consisting of a quantum space, delta form, and adjacency matrix. You uh, assign with it an operator space it's, or usually in the literature you call they call them they call it operator system but the problem is that this operator the subspace have no unit is not in the subspace but given a quantum graph you uh, assign to it a, a space of operators now we tell you quickly what is this space when you consider classical graph namely this space of space of operators this subspace of operators so these are operators on these are operators on l2 of g and they are of the form uh, m a times M star. Now you put here an arbitrary operator X. And when you allow X to be an, an, an arbitrary operator acting, acting on L2 of G, then you get a subspace in L2 of G. Um, which will be important later on in, in this talk when I will tell you what is a quantum chromatic number, what is a classical chromatic number for a quantum graph, and so on. Uh, so you, there, are, there are many different approaches to many different versions of, of a, a concept of a quantum graph. One of, one of them is due to, due to Weaver, who um, focuses on, on this operator or system, uh, I never remember which one should contain unit and should be self-adjoint. This one is self-adjoint, but doesn't contain unit because there are no loops inside. So S of G with uh, uh, C of G and it all happens in L2 of G is a quantum graph in the sense of Weaver. Weaver quantum graph. Whatever it means, it's not important to, to, to give you the definition, but it, it, you should remember that, is, that there is a specific set of operators assigned to a even quantum graph. If you are, just classical, and you have a adjacency matrix A. So then S of G is nothing but 
uh, it's spent by, by AIG, AIJ, matrix units, uh, when I and J are linked by the, by the edge relation in, in your graph. So you number your vertices by natural, by, by number one, two, three, up to N. And then you have a relation, edge relation between these numbers. And whenever there is there are two numbers related by the edge, linked by the edge, then then you add to your operator system a corresponding matrix unit, and and you span a, a space of operators given by them. And this is what is an operator space assigned to a classical graph. And in the quant actually the quantum counterpart is exactly this this formula here, which will be important later on. So now let me present the first result. We with Arek we can, we give you the theorem which is quantum quantum counterpart of the Michelski construction. So definition or theorem theorem. So Arek um, Arek Bochniak. We we start with a quantum graph G. So quantum space blackboard G, delta form psi, adjacency matrix A. And we will give you a, we will construct a new quantum graph, mu of G. Mm, so G of mu of G, psi of mu of G, and A of mu of G. I have no space to write it. This is A of mu of G. So how is this arrow? actually realized, namely you, so first of all, mu of um, we define a quantum space of this quantum graph mu of G in the in the only reasonable reasonable way. So so we take the classical space consisting of one point. And we take the non-intersecting non sum with disjoint sum of, of two copies of G, which on the level of algebras means that C of mu of G is direct sum of complex numbers, complex number complex numbers, which corresponds to this singleton, and two copies of the algebra of, star algebra of, of G. Now we need psi mu of G, and we I, we, I should tell you what is A, adjacency matrix of mu of G. And this required some effort, uh, and namely done mainly done by Arek. He was able to 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 find the the correct uh, parameters, uh, which are present in the formula for psi. So psi should be applied to triple lambda, which is a number, and two copies of x and y, x and two copies two elements from C of G here and there. And we, we need a formula for for a delta form. Actually, it's not a delta form. Delta changes. And uh, delta is replaced by the square root of 2 delta square plus 1. Uh, why is it so? <laughs> I have no heuristic for that, but I'm oh, sorry. Uh, my daughter is calling me. I'm not sure. 
Nie mogę teraz nie mogę teraz rozmawiać. Nie mogę rozmawiać. Nie mogę rozmawiać. Nie mogę rozmawiać. Jak chcesz, to przyjść do domu. A gdzie jesteś? W domu, tylko że jestem zajęty. Pa, pa. A. Sorry for that. Uh, OK, so we have a formula for the uh, for new state, which is the old one applied to the sum. And there is renormalization here present. And uh, yeah, in one, I'm not sure whether it can be really uh, explained those, those coefficients here and there. They are required to get something which is a delta form for new delta. So actually it's a square root of, if you take square root of two delta square plus one, so then you get a delta form on C of mu of G. So this is part of this theorem. You must check that. And finally, you have to describe what is the action of uh, adjacency matrix on lambda x, y. And again, difficult to, to justify the formula heuristically. But if you take the formula like I'm writing, Y is this thing here, then a g of x plus y x is here. And finally, lambda times one on c of g plus a g of x. And then what you get is uh, claim theorem. Uh, if you take uh, G of mu of G and psi of mu of G and A of mu of G, then this triple is a quantum graph is a quantum graph. And this thing is, a, as I mentioned, with delta, delta of mu of g so equal how to- How do you see that this a mu g is linear in x? I have a problem with the last row. Imagine I want to have x plus x prime and see the linearity. X plus x prime. Uh, so where do you have problem? Well, we have a plus lambda, so. Yeah, but lambda is uh, independent. Lambda times one. Ah, so it's always there. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Linear. Okay. Okay. It's linear. I think it's okay, linear. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look linear, but uh, since lambda yeah, is just yeah, yeah. In the independent part, one dimensional subspace, then it's all fine. Okay, so now I think it's a time to speed up a little bit. I'll, I will uh, switch on to to the uh, slides which are which I was using uh, in Glasgow actually. Mm. And I will, in the last few minutes, I will try to give you the main results which we got with AREC. So I was here in this presentation. Uh, can you see now those ready, those, those uh, slides which uh, yeah. I will okay. continue to use? So, okay. Mm, sorry. So we were here, we were here. I claim that this construction is a 
good construction in the theory of quantum graphs, you define a new graph, new quantum graph with new delta form. And now we can ask what happens with chromatic number of this new graph and what how the uh, click number behaves under this construction. So first, let me uh, quickly describe a chromatic number for a quantum graph and quantum chromatic number for a quantum graph. So given a number, a natural number C and the graph G, we say that G admits a Q C coloring, quantum C coloring, if there are a finite von Neumann algebra, uh, a collection of projections P1, P2 up to PC. So we have C, C projections uh, in C of G amplified by the von Neumann algebra N. This one is finite dimensional, so we don't need closure here. And we we say that this is a QC coloring if for every operator X in our operator system, C of G, uh, the following holds. So you amplify X by the unit of N and you sandwich it with our projections PA and PA on the right. And one should get zero for every A from one to C. This is the condition. If this is satisfied, then we say that G admits quantum C coloring. And we say that it admits classical C coloring if N can be taken to be just trivial, one dimensional complex numbers. And uh, it's not that obvious that this is the con this is a co uh, this corresponds to the contact con to the concept of chromatic number, which were which was introduced at the beginning of this talk, but actually it is a good generalization. Name, namely, you can now define a chromatic number of uh, your quantum graph, which is a minimal uh, C for which there exists a C classical C coloring. So classical C coloring corresponds to the triviality of of fundamental algebra n and quantum chromatic number q chi of g is the minimal c for which there exists a quantum c coloring and clearly this is uh, bigger than that and there are quantum graphs for which the, this is strict and what we try to do we try with Arek, we tried to repeat uh, the theorem of, of Michelski for quantum graphs. And we actually, we were not able to, to fully, to fully um, to get the full analogous, re analogous result for quantum graphs. But what we got, so you should remember that uh, Michelski proved that this number, chromatic number of mu of G is the same as this number, as chromatic number of G plus one, it's equal. Michelski was not interested in quantum chromatic numbers. They were not discussed yet at the, at the time, I believe. Uh, so what we got with Arek, we proved that this is smaller or equal to that and smaller or equal to, to this. And similarly for quantum chromatic number, we, we get the same inequalities. And then we, after proving this result and the result about, about click number, which I will- Wait, 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 Pavel, sorry, I want to make sure I understand. So you, you say that even if you have a quantum graph, you still have a classical chromatic number and, and yeah. classical thing. Okay, okay. You have classical chromatic number for quantum graph, okay. you have quantum chromatic number for quantum graph. It's a bit confusing, but, and you have classical chromatic number for classical graph and quantum chromatic number for quantum graph. Yeah. So uh, when we were, when we were trying, well, we couldn't get the, the very satisfying result, which is the equality between this number and this number here. And we 
Moreover, we were not able to prove that for classical G, quantum, num quantum chromatic number of the classical graph G, of the Michelski, Michelski and of classical graph G, behave similarly and we couldn't find neither a proof nor a counterexample and we uploaded the the paper with this result to to archive and a few days later David Robertson uh, pointed out to an example which was in one of his paper of course related with something else but his example he provided an example of a classical graph G for which quantum chromatic number of, of its Michelskian is the same as a quantum chromatic number of, of this graph itself. So uh, already for classical graphs, quantum chromatic number behaves, uh, quantum chromatic number can behave differently than classical chromatic number. It doesn't jump. It may happen that it doesn't jump uh, after the, the Michelski construction. Uh, so, more, one, one more remark is that we were not able, as I mentioned, wow, how does, okay, this is the, uh, we were not able to prove, uh, to prove this thing here. In the most, most general case, we, we know by Michelski, we know that it holds when G is classical. So when our algebra, of G is commutative. And we we actually, we proved this equality under some very mild commutativity condition, which are quite technical and I will not, uh, I will not present you the, 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 whole, the, the whole formulation of this, this theorem, but the theorem says that under some mild commutativity condition, the Michelski result holds for quantum graphs. Uh, but still it's open whether it holds in general. Our feeling, I, 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 I wonder whether I agree still on that, but our feeling is that it may happen that it doesn't grow under, uh, that quant classical chromatic number can, can stay the same after Michelski construction when you apply it to quantum graph G. This is one message. Another message of this paper is that for click numbers, there are no problems, actually. You can define a click number for quantum graph. You can also define, we, we proposed in the paper, a click number for, uh, we propose a quantum click number as a quantum Quantum, as an, well, in an analogy to quantum chromatic number, we have also a quantum click number defined in our paper. Um, I wouldn't like to go in the, the full details of that. The, the result that we prove is that, uh, what is a classical click number for quantum graph? It's, it can be defined in, in two different ways. One of them is very uh, analogous to the classical context. Namely, you can consider a graph quantum graph G and there is a concept of it, quantum graphs, they form a category and uh, you, can, mm, you can take the maximal number N for which the classical complete, complete graph with M vertices uh, for which, well, can be embedded into G. And the, the largest click, the largest embeddable KM uh, defines the click number, which is M in this case. And uh, well, ignoring this second um, definition, which is equivalent to, to, that, to that one, and, and it's important in the proof, uh, what we were able to prove is that uh, click number is classical click number for quantum graph G uh, under Michelski construction is not stays stays uh, is stable under the Michelski construction is not not changed as in the classical case. And last final, as if you well, I tried to explain the proof. The proof is not difficult. 
when we finally um, found this proof, it took us some time to, to, to realize what is the mechanism, what is the essential uh, reason for the click number not to be changed. But uh, the proof can be explained in, in 10 minutes. Um, but I should stop soon. Uh, the last final re remarks is that, first of all, we, we defined in our paper uh, quantum click numbers, uh, but we don't know what can what happens uh, with quantum click numbers under under Michelski construction. We don't have important well, results on that. And we started recently a new thing. We would like to see what happens with quantum groups assigned to, to quantum graphs and the behavior of quantum groups under Michelski construction is, is the thing which we, we, we would like to study. Uh, so maybe we'll have some new interesting results next time for the next talks, next talk in a, in a few months or, or years. But at, for now it's all, um, there are some generalizations of Michelski construction, which we described in our paper, and but my time is up, and I thank you for your attention. So I will stop. Uh, no, I shouldn't stop sharing. I think it can be useful. Are there comments or questions? Please, Peter. I can't hear you. Now, can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Yes. You can hear me. Hi. Uh, hello? Hello, hello, hello. I, yeah, yes, Ah, OK. Dobra, myślałem, że nie słyszę. All right. Uh, I would like to ask uh, the following. I thought that uh, quantum click numbers were defined pretty much like you did. So. Uh, yeah, I was. You I was at a the little quantum homomorphism game, and if you have a perfect strategy. Yeah, I, I was. I wasn't that. Sh we did it for most general case. Uh, I, I'm not. So I wasn't. They were, they were defined for classical graphs, but quantum click numbers. That's what I meant. Like ah, okay. So, so I think we, it's in the work. So we have probably, with a million people. I mean, okay, we have a probably different uh, definition. When I was saying that we defined a quantum click number, I was a bit afraid that I may be wrong. Maybe it was defined before. Well, I think uh, that the no, definition no, I'm, I'm was hoping. was that you look at the quantum homomorphism game uh, with from. Uh, from a complete classical graph to some other classical graph, and if there exists a perfect strategy, then yeah. So we have a different M and yeah. we have a different definition, and I'm not sure what is the relation. We I we see. are okay. we we consider uh, complete quantum graphs based on a given quantum space with a fixed I see. delta okay. form, yeah, yeah. and we are interested in embeddings uh, of that. These are the the complete graphs are different are the ones of Brannan and Falk and everything. yeah yeah they are different so so they there there is a perhaps there is a relation between these two two approaches but I I'm not sure what is what is exactly the relation okay thanks more questions uh, no raised hands. Zoom. Yes, please. I have a question uh, which is a bit philosophical, but I think it's important because I don't understand why. Uh, why Michelski did it to begin with? So it's great that he, there is a theorem showing that certain things are invariant and there is a jump when you go from graph to its Michelski. There was, there was a problem whether there exists a graph without triangles. Uh -huh. Large chromatic number. People didn't know that before uh -huh. Michelski. Uh, I'm not sure how in, important the, the question was, but the reason for his construction is is to to give uh, uh, well a positive answer to this question. For for given n, you can always construct quite explicitly a graph with chromatic number equal to n and mm -hmm. no triangles inside. And if you think for a while, I'll think. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so 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 this uh, construction of of Michelsky was designed, you know, to keep the chromatic number down, but then remove. Uh, uh, sorry to keep uh, sorry to keep uh, the click number down to just um, two and then increase chromatic number as much as as you yeah. want. Yeah. Okay. 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 I've got it. Sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the motivation for him, and we just uh, try to repeat this construction and see what happens with with exactly this phenomenon. But do we have the same statement about you know triangles and chromatic numbers? Triangles, we we know we know they uh, under control. Click number is stable in this construction, but unfortunately, at the moment, in general, we we don't control the chromatic number. We it can happen that it doesn't grow, which is uh, disappointing. Ah yes, because there's no jump. Yes, I see it now. Okay. It may happen that there is no okay. jump, but we okay. we, try, we we try to. So recently, uh, Mateusz Wasilewski wrote a paper about Cayley, quantum Cayley graph. Maybe this is in territory to, to check this behavior of chromatic number. We, we try to check this uh, under um, for Hadamard quantum, quantum graphs, but uh, so far we do not have any, we do not have interesting results on that. So we do not control chromatic numbers fully. We know it. It may grow, but it can stay the same. That's yeah. Thank you very much. This was an answer I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a bit more who this person was, Michelski? Yeah, I <laughs> I just checked on Wikipedia, and it's he's famous of uh, of a of a few things. He did his he did this construction in 1955. Uh, he did something else, but now I forgot. And when you go to physics department, when we, when I am, uh, I work at the physics department, you you come across Michelski, Jan Michelski, who was uh, a dean, if I remember correctly, at some point in seventies or or later, even later maybe. But they are different guys, and uh, I'm not even sure whether there is. Uh, Relation. Uh, family relation between them. Uh, the physicist is um, much younger than, than, than the mathematician. Maybe Eric knows more. I, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, thanks. So maybe Eric. Maybe Eric just is not present here. No, Eric. Yeah. No, I'm here, but I don't remember this. No, we, we, we discussed that, right, at some point? Yeah, that's true, but I forgot. <laughs> yeah, me too, I forgot it. I checked, I, I have the vague, uh, vague, I vaguely remember that they are, they there is a family relation between them, but what, what is exactly one of them? They form a clique. <laughs> they form a clique, yeah. I have a question. Uh, so in, the, in your definition of quantum chromatic number, uh, you, you vary your, your data over finite quantum algebra. So uh, because things are in finite dimensional cases, can you just vary uh, this over, say, hyperfinite tone factor and I still get the same number? Or something? Oh. In the definition of chromatic number, you allow n to be a finite fundamental algebra. So is there, a I'm not an expert on that, so I will not give you an answer, which is, so can you, can you embed an arbitrary fundamental algebra into hyperfinite one factor? Probably not. No, no. Not, so my answer would be rather negative that restricting here to uh, hyperfinite one factor would give you a different chromatic number. Because what I understand this QC name comes from this, I think. Uh, this, uh, yeah, actually, I made. Uh, actually, I think I I could I maybe I made the mistake here. 
maybe it should be now I'm confused a bit. I would have to look at in, into the paper. Maybe Ara can help me, but here in the definition of quantum chromatic number, you take finite dimensional um, algebra. Uh, right? No, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm, that's true. Yeah, I made a mistake here in this in this definition. Sorry for that. Here in this definition, you you should you should uh, you should uh, put an extra condition that the dimension of n is finite, and then uh, the answer to your question is positive. You were right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Sorry, sorry for for the mistake. Thank you. No more questions. So then I will continue your question. Um, what about a version of this uh, definition? Uh, if you replace um, the tensor product of C of G with this N for more general for Neumann algebras in the following form, instead of taking this tensor product, you, you are taking uh, bounded linear maps from the predual of n to c of g. Mm. Does it make sense? Yeah, I, I, I can feel what you have on mind, but uh, whether it will change something here. So maybe every, it be, every... Be, maybe it would be better infinite dimensional version of. But how then? How do you write this condition? Maybe then it's more difficult to to write it. I am not sure. Yeah, sorry, I, I if you could that. only multiply these things and projections. Uh, but it's so natural in, in this in this way, which is written in the way it seems to be very natural to my taste, and I wouldn't <laughs> be happy to see a predual there and uh, an attempt to multiply those objects uh, with this way of perceiving them as element of maps from preduals to COG. I, I Can I add something to this? Yes, I think that the uh, Tomek's question comes from the fact that this is a very specific way of writing this uh, idea of a quantum chromatic of the quantum chromatic number, which actually has a much better explanation in terms of, again, uh, uh, strategies for quantum games. And then this is just, a, a, let's say, a shadow of that definition. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there is a reason this, com this appears, but it's, well, it would take a lot of time to explain. So maybe the fact that this doesn't look very natural or might not look very natural is that it, it is not the first uh, approach to this. It's, it's yeah, the, the, the digested the, form that is useful, right? When you use quantum games, it's more, it has the more flavor of, of coloring. Stronger, stronger flavor of coloring is present in this definition that is alluded to by Piotrek uh, right now. But uh, yeah, after analyzing the quantum games, quantum games, uh, one cook up this definition, and then we, and it's quite standard. So, okay, I, I have another question. Uh, both uh, classical uh, graphs and, and quantum graphs form categories. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, well, I probably there must be there must be an embedding of of classical graphs into quantum graphs. So, but it's not clear to me uh, how could you uh, characterize uh, classical graphs among um, quantum mm -hmm. ones. Uh, what uh, you have to add to 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 commutativity to obtain. Uh, full characterization of classical graphs. Yeah, just just commutativity. commutativity. Just commutativity. Yeah, I guess. So, so the yeah. rest, uh, okay, okay. 
All the rest is just so delta part. Is, more delta part is just uniformly distributed probability measure on, on the classical space. Ah, so okay, okay. So, so there is something. So this choice of of delta form, the definition of delta form is a delta form is something which behaves like a uniformly distributed probability measure on your quantum space. So, so probably the question is about this: how this uniformness uniformity of this uh, counting measure uh, how you get it from from your uh, formalism well a delta form on, on a commutative c star algebra will is all just, will be all, it's, it's, all there is all only one choice then i see i see delta form on the commutative space is the uniformly distributed probability measure delta form Thank on you. a quantum space they are classified everybody i, I can write to a formula but uh, it requires some time to, to write it. Uh, but when you apply this formula to classical spaces, then you get uniform distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, may I continue my question? Sorry for, for that. Ask yourself. Do we have to, one minute? Uh, so these um, numbers are defined in terms of the existence or not in non-existence of, of some some morphisms in these categories of, of graphs yeah uh, of course there's a theory of other uh, morphisms which are isomorphs in this category is this theory of this chromatic number numbers uh, a part of, of some more general story embracing this these numbers and the question of of of, of the group of isomorphism so I see on your notes. So yes, I can see uh, quantum isomorphisms from G to F. So probably <laughs> my expectation is is, uh, is right. But we we have a problem here that we were not able to prove that uh, when uh, you start with two graphs, two quantum mm -hmm. graphs which are quantum isomorphic, and you apply. Uh, this construction to, to graphs, and we were not able to prove that uh, the Michelskians are quantum isomorphics, isomorphic. So, so Michelski construction could be not a functor. Oh, I see. With, with category in which you consider quantum morphisms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I do not have, I didn't try to to work on that myself so uh, yeah, but this seems to be true if and uh, the delta forms are the same so if we start yeah, from if delta forms are the same they are it, this, this holds but uh, there are there are examples of quantum graphs with different delta forms which are maybe delta delta forms, but the same value of delta maybe that would be the better statement if we uh, stick to the same value of delta, yeah I'm then sorry if, if deltas same. are the same this is what i wanted to do if deltas are the same for 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 both of them uh, but this doesn't hold actually after glasgow conference um sergey Nizhviev and makoto yamashita gave an example of two quantum graphs which are quantum isomorphic but they have different deltas in the definition of delta form they are not equal and without this uh, condition we were not able to prove that quantum michelski construction um, michelski construction for quantum graphs preserve quantum preserve the condition of being of graphs being quantum isomorphic Thank you very much. Are there questions from the audience? No, I can see no raised hands. So thanks, the speaker. Okay, thank you. So I stop sharing now.